starts right now. Hi, good morning. It is Wednesday, November 11th. It is Veterans Day, so thank you to all you veterans out there for your service. Absolutely. We do salute you uh, this day and every day here in Military City, USA. We have some good news. Maybe a little bit of insurance for those of you worried about a big turkey day fail. Yeah, this is great news for first time Thanksgiving, I guess, chefs. <laughs> is that a good chef? That's a good choice of Attempted word. Chef? <laughs> yeah, uh, Whole Foods Market and Progressive Insurance have a new way to insure your Thanksgiving meal against those dreaded holiday accidents. Mm -hmm. They have announced a Thanksgiving turkey protection plan, mm -hmm. their first ever insurance for the beloved centerpiece of the Thanksgiving meal. So to qualify for the coverage, you need to purchase a Whole Foods brand turkey by November 22nd. Then if you burn, undercook, overcook, or commit another turkey fail between Thanksgiving and Black Friday, you can go to the website www.turkeyprotectionplan.com to submit a claim. All right, so here's the catch. Mm -hmm. the, you have to buy your bird at Whole Foods and the first 1,000 eligible claims get a $35 Whole Foods gift card in return. So here's a quote, as we anticipate more smaller Thanksgiving gatherings and first time cooks tackling turkey preparation this year, the Thanksgiving Turkey Protection Plan allows customers the freedom of culinary exploration, knowing all is not lost should their cooking go astray. That according to Theo Weening, the Whole Foods VP of Meat and Poultry. So millions of Americans are expected to have scaled down celebrations amid the coronavirus pandemic, heeding official warnings against travel and large indoor gatherings. So if you're worried about burning the bird, go ahead and check it out. Go ahead and get your turkey over there at Whole Foods between uh, November by November 22nd, 22nd. Mm -hmm. and then register for the plan at turkeyprotectionplan.com. I think our producer, Oriana, is listening very carefully. She should be. Yeah, <laughs> it's going to be her first turkey. <laughs> Good luck, Oriana. <laughs> Here's today's nine at nine. Texas has become the first state to surpass 1 million COVID-19 cases. More than 19,000 people across the state have died from coronavirus complications. San Antonio Mayor Ron Nirenberg is quarantining after a possible COVID-19 exposure. The mayor tweeted last night that he tested negative, but will continue to self-isolate. Joe Biden moving forward with transition efforts despite some challenges. Biden's staff has been blocked from federal funds, briefings, and other access necessary to gear up for the transition of power. Biden is expected to meet with transition advisors today. Democrats have officially clinched two more years of controlling the House of Representatives. The Associated Press determined that Democrats have nailed down at least 218 seats. They could still win several others when states finish counting votes. Today is Veterans Day. Like most celebrations in 2020, the federal holiday will look different this year due to COVID-19. Many commemorations are canceled or will be held virtually. President Donald Trump has been laying low since last week, but is expected to visit Arlington National Cemetery today to mark Veterans Day. The president and first lady will attend a ceremony during which President Donald Trump will lay a wreath at the tomb of the unknown soldier. A Vatican report revealing Pope John Paul II knew about the extensive sexual abuse allegations against Theodore McCarrick, but still promoted him to archbishop and then cardinal. McCarrick was defrocked by Pope Francis last year amid more allegations. The Wall Street Journal says the Federal Aviation Administration is considering new penalties against Boeing. This over accusations of quality control lapses and management pressure on safety engineers. The 54th Annual CMA Awards will take place tonight from Nashville's Music City Center. Reba McIntyre and Darius Rucker will be co-hosting. You can watch the awards live at 7 right here on KSAT and ABC. And that is today's 9 at 9. You smiling because of Oriana's turkey? <laughs> yes. Oriana mm -hmm. still is not sure about enlisting or enrolling in the yeah. turkey protection plan. What was the issue, Oriana? You she, said she, even if so, if you burn it or there's a big turkey fail, you're still you're out of turkey. That's right. the problem. Her point is you can get the gift card, but it's for later. That doesn't help your immediate problem. I understand. Well, we're still encouraging you to go out there and go ahead and do your first turkey anyway, Oriana. <laughs> we have faith in you. We do. Sarah Spivey is in for Justin today and uh, Obviously, you're newly wed. Have you roasted your own turkey yet for Thanksgiving? No, I haven't. I let I let my mother do that because mm -hmm. she's been the queen 
of cooking the turkey for the last several years. So I'll let her do that this year. Uh, we have, though, in the past, just got a Thanksgiving dinner from Bill Miller's. It's and nothing good. wrong with that. It's pretty good. Mm -hmm. All right. Uh, let's go ahead and take a look at the aquifer level. The aquifer level is actually up two-tenths of a foot over the past 24 hours. That's some good news, but we're still under those stage one water restrictions. And I was a little concerned about the pollen count because yesterday was kind of drizzly with light rain. I was worried that the mold would go up, but it actually has gone down. Mold is low at 180. Juniper is present at 20. Juniper, often a precursor for for mountain cedar. So we'll have to wait and see. Mountain cedar season usually starts in December. So uh, let's try to keep that at bay as much as possible. But it is Veterans Day. Happy Veterans Day. And thank you to all of the veterans out there watching this morning. I'll be back with a look at our forecast for the day. It's going to be absolutely beautiful. And then we'll go up and down the sunshine seesaw. I'll tell you what I mean by that coming up in a bit. Checking Transguide now at I-10 and Days of Olive. There's 410 at Fredericksburg. We will be on the lookout for any accidents around the metro area during this hour of GMSA at 9. And top stories we're following today, San Antonio police say an officer and a teen suspect are in the hospital this morning after a chase led to a crash on the southwest side. Officers say it all started last night around 8.30 when a girl allegedly stole a truck from another girl. While officers searched the area, they spotted the truck on Rose Lawn and attempted to make a traffic stop. Police say the suspect didn't stop, so officers followed her until she crashed into an officer's patrol car near Old Pearsall Road and West Military. The officer was injured in the crash, but is expected to recover. The teen suspect was last listed in critical condition. We now know the name of a man found dead after a shooting just north of downtown. Bear County Medical Examiner's Office identified him as Michael Lane. Officers found him dead with a gunshot wound to the head. That was just before 7 Monday night in the 900 block of Main Avenue. Investigators are still working to figure out what led to the shooting. At last check, no arrests had been made in the case. Kerr County Sheriff's Office searching for a missing 70 year old man. They tell us the man has been diagnosed with a medical condition and poses a credible threat to his own health and safety. So take a look at this picture of Roger William Robertson. He was last seen yesterday morning in Center Point driving a black 2005 Ford F-150. He's 5'9", 140 pounds, has gray hair and brown eyes, last seen wearing glasses, a flannel sweater, gray t-shirt and black pants. If you have any information on his work, Whereabouts, call the Kerr County Sheriff's Office at 830-896-1133. On this Veterans Day, keep in mind there are some closures around town that you need to know about. City Hall and most municipal offices are closed today. Police, fire, and EMS personnel all on duty. Also, city-run COVID testing sites will remain open. Garbage and recycling will be collected as normal. And if you're heading downtown, today is a parking meter holiday. You can find a bigger list of what's closed and what's open on our website at kset.com. Yep, no mail and banking holiday too. Hey, as the number of COVID cases continues to rise here in the Alamo City, the city is opening a new testing site today. Community Labs will administer tests at the AT&T Center from 10 this morning till 2 in the afternoon. These test sites are for people who are asymptomatic. The city will run the testing at this location every week, Monday through Friday during these hours. Turning now to your other morning headlines, firefighters in Honolulu, Hawaii, working to get a high rise fire under control. Crews say the fire broke out in an apartment complex in Hawaii around 6 yesterday evening. Part of one unit was fully engulfed when firefighters arrived. Luckily, there were no injuries and firefighters were able to get the fire under control in less than an hour. The Indianapolis Fire Department investigating after they say an arsonist set fire to a home over the weekend. Surveillance video captured the suspect attempting to set the fire once and then returning when it didn't catch. Sierra Hignite with Wish TV in Indianapolis has the details. Please help us. The family that lived inside of this house on East 91st Street had built their forever home three years ago, only to wake up at 3.30 Saturday morning to see their dream go up in flames. The couple went to bed at 11 o'clock on Friday night. When they were woken up after 3.30 by their dog, Zero, they heard the sound of glass cracking and thought someone was trying to break in. When they got to the kitchen, they saw this. They were able to escape safely with all of their animals before the fire got inside of the home. This is not an accident, the woman told me over the phone. 
The suspect is first seen in surveillance video approaching the back of the home and trying to set the house on fire at 3 a.m. They returned at 3.30 when the fire didn't catch, only this time they watched to make sure the fire burned. The homeowner said they stole my sense of safety and security. About a month before the fire, the couple's wheelbarrow and hammock were stolen. Those items were later found in a field behind their house, the same field where the arsonist ran after setting the fire. They'd also made a report with IMPD recently after fireworks were pointed towards their home. The couple says between 7.30 Saturday night after the fire and 8 a.m. Sunday morning, their house was also burglarized. They say that the thieves stole jewelry, wine, and archery equipment from their garage and inside of their home where the fire hadn't reached. They found the items in the same field as before. Right now, investigators have not connected the two incidents. And again, that was Witch TV Sierra Hignite reporting from Indianapolis. And take a look at this. A sinkhole swallowed a van in L.A.'s Crenshaw District. What do you say? The road caved in after a water main broke. Uh, officials say it was an 8-inch cast iron main that was stalled way back in 1937. The owner of the van says this came as a shock to her, but it isn't the first time something like this has happened. We had another water break, maybe three houses down, a water line break, and it opened the street a little bit, but it wasn't this bad. It did ca cause all this mess and everything, but it wasn't this bad. And until the van is lifted, Anderson and her husband will not know how bad that damage to their van is. There were no injuries. This thrill seekers day in England could have ended a lot worse. A dizzying operation unfolding after the man attempted to climb a cliff in Dorset. In the UK, when it became stuck on the steep slope nearly 70 feet up. The Coast Guard agency rescuers were able to airlift the man to safety. They say other than being cold and visibly shocked, the man was okay. Rescuers also say visitors should know their limits when enjoying the UK's beautiful coastline. And we have late breaking news this morning out of the city's north side. San Antonio police are at the scene of a shooting in the 11,300 block of Baltic Drive. That's just north of Castle Hills. And that's where we find Sarah Costa live with more. What do we know, Sarah? Good morning, and I just spoke with police just minutes ago, and they did confirm that this is a shooting involving a 45-year-old man who was shot in the back. He is currently in surgery right now. His condition is not known. They said they are listing him as critical condition, but this might be non-life-threatening injuries. Uh, now, police say that there was a 10-year-old child sleeping upstairs of this home when that shooting occurred around seven o'clock this morning. That child was taken with relatives and is safe at this time. Now they do have a the mother of the child in custody at this time. Uh, they were questioning her. They said that she was very cooperative and giving them information, but she did have a warrant for an unrelated matter. So she was taken into custody. As for who the suspect is, they have an idea that it might possibly be a family member living at this home. However, they said the victim, that 45 year old man who was shot is not being cooperative. Uh, so they have very limited information. They're still trying to figure out if this actually was an intentional shooting or not. Uh, so they have an idea of who the suspect is. No one at this time, according to police, is in custody as a suspect. Like we said, they have the mother of the child working with police who is in custody for questioning that child is safe and that 45 year old man who was shot is at the hospital right now in surgery. Uh, we did have, we did see some homicide detectives here. They have since come and gone, and this scene should be clearing shortly at this time. Just keep it here on GMSA and on KSAT.com for updates on this developing story throughout the morning. Live from the North Side, I'm Sarah Costa, KSAT 12 News. Mark and Stephanie. All right, thank you, Sarah. Right now we're at 912, 67 degrees, still ahead on GMSA at 9. The pandemic isn't stopping country music legends from celebrating on their biggest night, a preview of tonight's CMA Awards. In today's Katie Science Lab, learning a bit more about how plants work. Katie Blake walks us through the cabbage water movement experiment later in the newscast. Veterans Day is a day where we honor veterans across the country, but it's also meant to bring awareness to issues affecting the military community. After the break, the story of one veteran trying to get home after being deported. And let's check the Dow. Right now, it is down about 40 points, 29, 380.
And welcome back. It is 916. On this Veterans Day, a former U.S. Marine, Marcelino Ramos, is fighting to return home to his family. A criminal offense got him deported, and now he's trying to raise awareness on the plight that he and other deported veterans are going through. He spoke to us from Mexico to share his story. I was approached by two agents um, going to work. I was at work, um, but uh, just picked up and taken away. It was a nightmare, to say the least. I have all my family in Texas, uh, in San Antonio. Not here. I don't have any anyone here. It's it's very difficult to 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 take it all in, even trying to live because I am not there to provide for my family. But. But I have to keep trying. Yes. How is that fair for somebody that has served to not be able to enjoy the freedoms that he fought to protect? Bring some light. Bring, let somebody know. Somebody let somebody know. Somebody will eventually let everybody know in one day. One day, hopefully, all this thing will be passed behind us. And for more information on the story, you can head to KSAT.com. And later tonight at 5 and 6, we're going to hear from more deported veterans and also take a look at their chances of being able to return back to the United States. Yeah, I'm interested to find out more myself. Uh, got some breaking news just coming in right now. Uh, Alaska is one of the states that was taking quite a while to count their election returns. And apparently, President Trump has been declared the winner in the uh, Alaskan presidential race over Joe Biden. Just wanted to pass that along to you. And of course, more later on KSET.com in our later newscast. But for now, let's go ahead and check with our Sarah Spidey, who's filling in for Justin Horn. Good morning. Hi, good morning, guys. And what a what a great day to be able to be here with you. Veterans Day to honor all of our veterans out there. I, I, if you'll indulge me, I want to take a moment to highlight well, of course. one of, of course. my favorite veterans. We all have veterans life. in our families, and yeah. I'm sure you are too. This is my grandfather, yeah. John. Uh, he served in the Korean War. There he is with my grandmother, Evelyn and me as well. It's also my grandfather John's birthday. That's so cool. want to wish hey. him a very happy birthday and a very happy Veterans Day. Thank you, Grandpa, so much. I love you and I miss you and I hope you're staying warm in Iowa. All right, <laughs> right now outside you can see totally clear skies, 67 degrees. We've got north northeast winds at about 10 miles per hour. Those winds, of course, from the north because of the cool front that we received yesterday. That's what's also allowed our humidity to go down dew points in the 40s and 30s right now so it feels absolutely amazing outside as we start Veterans Day here. 59 in Kerrville. Kerrville did dip down into the 40s though earlier this morning. 64 in Rock Springs and in Del Rio. 68 in Gonzales. 73 in Beeville. 70 in Pleasanton and 69 in Catula. The biggest difference you'll notice from yesterday to today is a the sunshine. The sun is out. As of yesterday we were still dealing with some cloud cover, uh, but the other thing you'll notice is the much lower humidity. This is a look at the dew point change in the last 24 hours. We've seen dew point change of about 20 to 30 degrees, and so that's why it feels a lot better outside. We still do have some clouds, though, to the west of San Antonio. You look out to Yavaldi, uh, Frio County, down to Eagle Pass in Maverick County and Del Rio itself, and you can actually see some of the cloud cover there. Here around San Antonio, it's totally sunny, but as we look into the future cast. Those clouds will hang around through about uh, lunch hour for those folks across areas uh, south and west of San Antonio. But here in San Antonio, we'll have total sunshine all day long. As a result, our Temperatures are going to warm up really nicely. It's going to be nice and warm in the afternoon, but comfortable with low humidity. An afternoon high in the low 80s, 80 in Austin, 82 New Braunfels, 83 Gonzales, 80 in Pleasanton for the high temperature, 82 in Uvalde, 80 in Del Rio, 78 in Eagle Pass. Here in San Antonio, we'll be warming up to the upper 70s by noon with low humidity. Sunsets 540 this evening before sunset, right around 4, we'll reach our afternoon high of 83 degrees and we'll have northeast 
northeast winds at 5 to 10. It'll be a mild evening. Temperatures aren't going to fall off too much, and the reason for that is we're actually going to see humidity or at least mugginess return by the start of the day tomorrow. It's not going to be oppressively humid outside, but you'll notice the mugginess tomorrow and especially on Friday as well. So because the humidity is returning tonight, we're actually going to go up and down the sunshine seesaw. All right, you'll need to indulge me again as I have fun with these graphics. Tomorrow morning, cloudy with some patchy drizzle, but tomorrow afternoon, sunny and 83. By Friday morning, we'll be dealing with uh, morning clouds, and these will be even more stubborn on Friday. We'll potentially even have a light rain shower, but we will see some sun in the afternoon on Friday as we round out the work week. Looking ahead to the weekend, we do get a cool front on Sunday, and that's going to drop our temperatures a little bit more seasonable as we start next week, even chilly in the mornings with temperatures in the 40s. Sarah, I love your seesaw graphic. Thanks. <laughs> Very appropriate. It's a tongue twister. Week. Sunshine seesaw. I love it. Thank if you, you can do it, well, maybe no. <laughs> maybe not. I can't. I can't. 922, 67 degrees. And still ahead on GMSA at 9 is one of the biggest nights in the country music world. The CMA Awards air tonight right here on KSET. So a preview of what to expect next. The coronavirus pandemic isn't stopping country music legends from celebrating on their biggest night. Despite a couple of stars testing positive for COVID-19 just before the show, this year's CMA Awards will be jam-packed with the top performers in country music. And for the first time in a dozen years, the show will have a pair of new hosts. That's right. ABC's Romina Puga is in L.A. with the preview. The 54th annual CMA Awards are here. Well, this is incredible. I, I can't wait for this night to just be what it's going to be. And although longtime host Harry Underwood is stepping down after a 12-year run, it's going to be a special night as Reba McIntyre and Darius Rucker are co-hosting. Because everything has happened with the pandemic, the quarantine, we're going to try to keep it light, be funny. That's up to you. <laughs> the two country music legends set to perform a duet. Can't give too much away, but I was about to give too much away, but uh, it's going to be something really special to us. Look out for Miranda Lambert, who leads all the performers with a whopping seven nominations. Lambert also breaking a record with 55 career nominations. For people to still support what I'm doing, it means the world to me. The evening is slated to be packed with live performances by Lambert and Luke Combs, along with many more. You hear me like a hurricane. I can't wait to see the show. You one of them girls that a couple of headliners that were due to attend, but that you will no longer be seeing at the CMAs tonight, Lee Bryce and Florida Georgia Line. Blame it on my youth or my rebel room. Bryce and Tyler Hubbard of Florida Georgia Line tested positive for COVID-19 last week, so both had to drop out of their planned performances. But as the saying goes, the show must go on. Charles Kelly is filling in for Bryce's duet with Carly Pierce, and Chris Stapleton will perform his hit new song, Starting Over. Romina Puga, ABC News. And the CMAs air right here on KSET 12 tonight at 7. Much more ahead on GMSA at 9. What a burger fans rejoice. The fast food chain back with another holiday sweater now on sale. How much is going to cost you? And a look at the other items you can pair it with. McDonald's announced that meatless burger called a McPlant. Well, the name is getting grilled on social media. Seen as Jeannie Mose has a hilarious look at some of the things people are saying about it. And it's probably one of her best stories of the year. I love it. And restaurants around San Antonio offering veterans and active duty military some freebies and deals in honor of Veterans Day. Our Eric Hernandez will join us with a look at some of the best deals. That's next. And welcome back. It's 931. Restaurants around San Antonio are offering veterans and active duty military some freebies in honor of Veterans Day. Erica Hernandez joins us live from the KSAT 12 newsroom with a look at some of those deals this morning. They're pretty sweet, Erica. Oh, yeah, there's a lot to choose from, from donuts to steaks. Current and former military members can cash in on a variety of things from a wide range of businesses. We have an article up right now with the full list, but here are some of the best deals. At Bar Louis, veterans and active duty military can receive a free burger or flatbread of their choice. BJ's restaurants are offering a free entree up to $14.95 and a free Dr. Pepper. Pluckers is offering a free meal when dining in. 
At QT gas stations, you can receive a free self-serve coffee or fountain drink. And at Twin Peaks, military members can receive a free meal from a fixed menu. As far as some other deals we've seen, Santico's is giving out a free movie ticket. And just a reminder to veterans and active duty military to get any of these deals, you have to show a military ID or proof of service. To check out that full list, just head to ksat.com. Mark, Steph? A good reminder. Thank you, Erica. Thanks, Erica. In your morning consumer headlines, a massive recall for Ring doorbell cams. Company pulling a 350,000 of those models following reports they could catch fire. According to the U.S. Consumer Product Safety Commission, Ring has received 23 reports of fire involving its second generation smart doorbells. At least eight people suffered minor burns and there was property damage. The Safety Commission says a doorbell battery can overheat if the incorrect screws are used for installation and that can pose fire and burn hazards. Recall doorbells were sold in the U.S. and Canada between June and October of this year. The Food and Drug Administration believes a mobile app can help people with terrifying nightmares. The federal agency has approved the nightmare system as a form of treatment for PTSD patients. Nightwear, available on Apple Watches, allows clinicians to monitor patients who suffer from traumatic nightmares. Those nightmares have been linked with higher rates of suicide. The app also vibrates when it perceives that the patient is in the middle of a nightmare, gently waking up that person. Nightwear can only be downloaded with a prescription. Well, we've seen this in some places. A store within a store, Ulta Beauty, has a deal in place uh, to put some of their many stores in Target stores by mid-2021. The shops will be located next to Target's existing beauty sections. The partnership comes as a pandemic has upended shopping habits. Customers are increasingly focused on one-stop shopping, experienced as a way to minimize exposure to COVID-19. Yeah, they're going to do this about 100 Target stores. The deal could hurt other stores like Macy's, which has already seen its share of beauty business take a hit before the pandemic. And it's no secret that Texans love Whataburger, and now they have a way to show it this holiday season. Mm -hmm. Comes unveiled a Whataburger Christmas sweater. Fans can also buy matching socks, hats, and scarves. All, available, all items available for purchase right now at the online What a Store. The sweater is selling for $42.99. The socks go for $12.99, and the scarf is $24.99. Hmm, some Christmas gifts there. If mm -hmm. you want to get your hands on the merchandise, you better act fast. Whataburger holiday sweaters have been known to sell out within hours in the past. I remember a Whataburger sweater last year. This must be the newer edition. Yes, this is different. Mm -hmm. Outside with live cam, back to Sarah in for Justin. And you have an inherited a beautiful day today. It's a gorgeous day outside. Back to Whataburger, just for a second. <laughs> Whataburger. Okay. I used to think for a long time, until probably I could read that it was called Water Burger. Oh, water same. Burger. For yeah, real, because okay. I grew up here, and you know, when you're a kid, that's what you hear. Water, bur water Burger. Let's go get yeah. a Water Burger. Sounds <laughs> like it, right? <laughs> All right, so it is a beautiful day, as Mark was saying. And so coming up in the forecast, we're going to talk about today, Veterans Day, how the low humidity is really going to make things very nice. But for the rest of the week, we are going to have a return of mugginess, and so that's going to allow for morning clouds and afternoon sun. And then finally, we'll actually take a quick check of the tropics. Ada, which has been meandering over the Gulf of Mexico, is actually just returned to hurricane status. So I'll show you where Ada is going and if we have any chance for rain in our forecast here in San Antonio coming up in just a bit. Mark, Stephanie. Thank you, Sarah. Taking a look out with Transguy this morning, there's I-35 at Riddiman. Things looking pretty smooth this morning. All right, the doctor is in. It is time for Katie's Science Lab. David Sears off for a couple days, well-deserved days off. So Katie's flying solo this morning. That's right. And Katie, you have, I understand, cabbage in this experiment? Yes, this involves cabbage. But without my assistant, I forgot my lab coat. Just not, not, Aww, just don't have it going good. today. I'll you got the off, gloves. Totally thrown off. Yeah, I'm going to, I always wind up taking these gloves off. They're too big. Uh, but yes, our experiment today involves cabbage and some other vegetables. Uh, this is a kind of low key experiment. Again, today we're not blowing anything up, but this is a good experiment to teach kiddos um, about how plants, vegetables live and thrive. And it will also teach them a little lesson in patience. So here's what you are going to need. You're going to need some vegetables. I got cabbage lettuce and celery you can do a combination or just one or two next time you're at the store pick one of those up 
clear jars or containers. I've got mason jars today, some water and some food coloring. That is what you need. So not a whole lot. So what we're going to do, you're going to take your, you're going to put water in your mason jars. You're going to put some food coloring in it, and then you're going to put the leaves of the cabbage or the lettuce in the water. And then this is what happens. Ooh. I love to be dramatic here. Da, 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 da. Um, so I'm going to take all my different colors out here and we're going to see what happened. I put these, the cabbage, the lettuce, the celery in this water on Monday. And I have seen a little bit of a change in the celery, not as much. So we're going to start off with the cabbage and the lettuce. I've got my cabbage in purple here and some of the color started to go up all the stems of the cabbage. And if you leave this in here for several days, like maybe even five days, you would see a much more dramatic change. So I maybe should have started it over the weekend. My nice. bad, user error. But oh, you're good. <laughs> that's okay. That's, that's a good way for the kiddos to learn how long does it take for this change to happen. There you can kind of see it there. So how, what does this happen? How can you teach the kiddos, you know, kind of what's going on here? So these vegetables are vascular. Is that a word? Okay, see the lettuce looks good. Oh, oh yeah. The yeah. lettuce looks a lot better. And so if you let it sit for a few more days, that color would continue to move up the stems in the lettuce. So these vegetables are vascular plants here. This looks really good. You can see the blue there. Nice. Uh, so these vegetables are vascular plants, which means they've basically just got a bunch of tubes running all across the plant through the leaves and everything. And those tubes are made of a tissue called xylem. I think I'm pronouncing that correctly, X-Y-L-E-M. And this is a tissue that allows water to move from the roots of this plant all the way up through the leaves so that it can continue to grow and stay healthy. And that's how all of our plants, even our trees, uh, continue to grow and thrive. So set this up and leave it for a few days. Leave it for more than two days and see if you can get this, this blue color to travel all the way up through the leaves, through the xylem tissue in these plants. It's a cool kind of visual thing that you can teach the kiddos how plants get water and live. Did the red make it up the stalks of the celery? That's what I was going to. So I brought, um, I brought a butter knife. Don't get too excited. Um, <laughs> and I was gonna cut, so you can kind of see, yeah, here in the uh -huh. celery, yeah. I was thinking since celery is made of so much water anyway, I didn't know how well it would work, but it does look like a little bit okay, got in we'll there. See. Yeah, not Solo. now. Not, no, 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 kind of see it at the bottom there. Okay. So that's kind of, and ask the kiddos which, you know, what kind of vegetable do they think will be the most colorful. So, so this was, this was fun. That's very cool. My cat will stop eating the lettuce now on the, uh -oh. <laughs> on the countertop. So yeah, try it at home. Um, if you guys do any of our science lab experiments, be sure to send me pictures or video. Uh, we'd love to share what you guys are doing at home with the kiddos. All of the science lab activities are on ksat.com. Just search the KSAT Kids section. Cool. All right. Yes, and I like that it's a lesson in patience as well. Yes, you got to wait. Very good. Thank you, Katie Blake. Uh -huh. Right now it is 940, 67 degrees. You're watching GMSA at 9. McDonald's announced a new plant-based burger this week, and the response online has not been great. CNN's Jeannie Mose has hilarious social media reaction to the McClant. Next. Welcome back. McDonald's known for its uh, big brand names. There's the Big Mac, Chicken McNuggets, and the McFlurry. True, and as we told you yesterday, the fast food chain is releasing a new meatless burger called the McPlant. As CNN's Jeannie Mose reports, the McPlant is getting McMocked on social media. Watch this. Remember when burger chains used to ask, Where's the beef? Well, lately it's been, Where's the plant? Even McDonald's announced it's sprouting a plant-based burger, which they plan to call the McPlant? The name is getting grilled. McPlant is the laziest name. McPlant is a pretty bad name. But what do you expect from the people who called their fish sandwich filet fish when quarter flounder was right there for the taking? People aren't whining about the taste of a meatless burger. McDonald's tested the concept in Canada last year with the makers of Beyond Meat which gets rave reviews from YouTube chefs. Mmm. Mmm. That's insane. Wonderful. Less wonderful? McPlant. Mashable asks, can you think of a better name? Suggestions range from the big Unmac to McNotta Burger to Planty McPlant Face. 
Damn, Hamburglar must be pissed. Yikes! Actually, McDonald's first meatless burger got a short-lived trial run back in the 60s. The Hula Burger consisted of grilled pineapple slices with cheese on a toasted bun. Now that's way beyond even a Beyond Burger. What, you like them? I've never had my animals react to a veggie burger the way they react to these things. The McPlant will arrive in select McDonald's restaurants somewhere in the world sometime next year. Posted someone picturing me in 2021 enjoying my Pfizer vaccination with a quarter pound McPlant. You deserve a break today. Give us a break from McPlant. Make that McFacePlant. Genie Most, CNN. Are these kitty cat approved? New York. Huh? That is awesome. Forget McPlant. Now McDonald's has time to change it to back to quarter flounder. Yeah, that's just I know. I had never thought about that. That's pretty cool. Yeah. <laughs> I love the throwback video of the Hamburglar. Hadn't seen that guy in years. It's been a long, long yeah. time. Sarah Spivey is back with us now, and you're keeping an eye on the drought monitor. Yeah, so we're going to get a new drought monitor out tomorrow. Comes okay. out weekly, but we're already in the weeds when it comes to drought. No pun intended there. All right. Actually, I did not intend that pun. All right. Uh, our director, one of our directors here, Robert Flowers, he gave me these tiny little starter onions. Can you see them? Yeah, yeah I'm excited to start to plant them. But, uh, but a region that is struggling right now is the Winter Garden. Let's go ahead and take a look at the drought monitor. You can see that the Winter Garden, which is that area just south of Uvalde, kind of just to the north of Laredo, is under an exceptional drought right now. A and they could desperately need rain. now. Thankfully, all of the planning is done through irrigation, but we need rain around South Central Texas, and we're just not going to get a good amount over the next few days. Even some moderate drought has worked its way to San Antonio. Yesterday, we got some light rain, which was refreshing to see, but it wasn't important. It didn't amount to much. Not only are we struggling here in San Antonio, but out across the panhandle of Texas and West Texas, exceptional drought out there as well. 46% uh, of the state is in drought, so we'll see See that new drought monitor come out tomorrow. Justin Horn will be able to show that drought monitor tomorrow, at least by the noon show. Uh, but what we're left with today is just a beautiful day. So if we can't get rain, at least the weather's beautiful and the weather is beautiful today. 67 degrees, total sunshine out there. We do have a wind from the northeast at about 5 to 10 miles per hour. Temperatures are warming up pretty quickly uh, because of the total sunshine. It's still nice and comfortable, though, in comfort. 65 degrees, 68 in New Braunfels, 67 at Port SA, 70 at Rio Medina, and 71 in Hondo. You can see the total sunshine around San Antonio. We do have a few wispy clouds moving in uh, to southern Bear County, but uh, really any cloud cover is really off to the south and to the west. Some puffy cumulus clouds out there toward Del Rio, Eagle Pass, and that Winter Garden region I was just mentioning. Humidity is a lot lower than yesterday. Yesterday, our dew points were well into the 60s. This morning, dew points are only in the 30s and in the 40s. And so throughout the day today, we're going to have low humidity and it's going to feel great. Total sunshine, low humidity, that is a recipe to warm up quickly and warm up we are. In fact, to look at neighborhoods around San Antonio, 81 for the high in Stone Oak, 81 JBSA Randolph, 82 New Braunfels and Seguin, 80 in Leon Springs and Timberwood Park, 80 in Holotus. Here in San Antonio, we'll already be at 78 degrees by noon, 81 at 2, 83 for the afternoon high. Northeast winds at 5 to 10 miles per hour. Notice that we don't cool off too quickly tonight, and that is because mugginess is going to work its way back into the forecast as early as tomorrow morning. A wide national view here, and you can see where our cool front is that moved through yesterday. It's nice and cold behind that front up across the northern tier of the United States. The jet stream is going to keep that cold air to the north. Meanwhile, down south in near Florida, we've got Hurricane Ada strengthened, restrengthened to hurricane status. Current winds at 75 miles per hour. It's expected to move over Florida and eventually dissipate into a remnant low by Friday. A lot of rainfall for that area in addition to the heavier rain that fell across southern Florida earlier because of Ada. But here in Texas, no substantial rain over the next seven days. We are, however, going to have the potential for morning drizzle pretty much every day from tomorrow through Sunday morning 
that's when we'll get a front that'll move through. It'll help set up a seasonable start to next week, but no substantial rain, unfortunately. Good, nice weather for the most part. Yeah. Thank you, Sarah. Thank you. 950, 67 degrees. We'll be right back. Have you seen this yet? If you're not, you got to stop. That was a par three hole. Well done, John Rahm of Spain. Very impressive. And a good pair of shoes, something many people may take for granted. However, here in San Antonio, there are a lot of children who really need a new pair of shoes. That's why this month, our KSAC community partners once again joining the effort to make sure kids have proper footwear. They're teaming up with the nonprofit Zapatos and the San Antonio Police Department for the annual Share the Shoes Drive. If you would like to make a donation, you can drop off new shoes at any SAPD substation through November 30th. You can also make a monetary donation online. We have a closer look at this map and the link to donate on ksatcommunity.com. Holidays just around the corner and our community partners are also teaming up with the local nonprofit SA Youth for its stuck stuff a stocking holiday drive. Right now through December 18th, you can help spread holiday cheer to 650 students in their out of school time program by donating for stockings to be filled with small toys, arts and crafts and Healthy Snacks, SA Youth says a $25 donation will cover the cost of one holiday stocking. You can help by donating wish list items to the nonprofit such as Play-Doh, markers, and stickers. We have the full list of items and a link to donate on ksatcommunity.com. Okay. All right, ready to meet Rudolph, Santa Claus at SeaWorld. We've got the uh, holiday schedule out now on it's on ksat.com. Yeah, that's happening soon. So the park's annual Christmas celebration returning on select dates starting November 20th and ending January 3rd. Now there'll be fireworks finale on November 21st, 28th. December 10th through the 18th, guests can experience the traditional lighting of the menorah for Hanukkah. And of course, visitors will have the chance to meet Rudolph, the red-nosed reindeer, and Santa Claus. So on these days, the park will be open from 1 to 9 on November 20th, 22nd through the 22nd, 25th through the 29th, and in dates in December as well. Yeah, a whole bunch of other dates. It's all on KSAT.com. <laughs> of course, due to concerns about the pandemic, this year's celebration has been modified. Park visitor capacity limited. As a matter of fact, you're required to make a reservation and encouraged to do so as early as possible. Reservations can be made at a SeaWorld.com link. And we've got all of that embedded within this article at KSAT.com. That's right. And guests can also experience SeaWorld's Christmas celebration for free by purchasing a 2021 pass. So yeah, again, all the information, the link actually, KSAT.com. So we've got Christmas, Quads, and Hanukkah all wrapped in one bundle out there at SeaWorld <laughs> here in San Antonio. Yeah, just in time for the holidays. You guys have a great day.